The wait is over. Before I get into the details, I want you all to know that I still think this is the undisputed king of budget preamps, allowing anyone who is curious about getting into separates to do so without needing to take out a second mortgage or sell a kidney. So with that being said, let's get into the The Emotiva Basics MC1 is a 13.2 channel preamp processor supporting up to either a 7.2.6 or 9.2.4 immersive audio configuration. That's right, it supports front wides if you're needing that in your life. It measures 17 inches wide, 3 and 1 8 inches high, 13 inches deep, and weighing only 10 pounds. Perfect for rack mounting if that's your jam. It supports the two major audio formats including Dolby True HD, Dolby Atmos, DTS HD Master Audio, and DTSX. It has an internal Bluetooth receiver for streaming audio from a mobile device. For those who enjoy using their smartphone TV apps or plugging gaming consoles directly into your TV, it supports eARC, allowing higher bitrate codecs like Dolby Atmos to travel from your TV out to your surround sound system. It comes with its own EmoQ Advanced Automatic Room Correction System for optimal sound quality tailored to your specific room with a calibration microphone included, a front display with real-time status information and a full function illuminated infrared remote, two AA batteries not included, front panel navigation buttons, and volume control knob. Taking a look at the back, we have two unbalanced RCA subwoofer outputs as well as two balanced XLR outputs, analog RCA inputs for legacy video game consoles or perhaps a CD player, etc., two digital coax and two optical inputs, two HDMI 2.0B outputs that support 4K UHD video signals, HDCP 2.2, one of those outputs supporting eARC, and six HDMI inputs that support HDR formats like HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. There's also a Bluetooth antenna, an input for the EmoQ calibration mic, infrared port, trigger output to allow connected external amps to automatically turn on when the MC1 is turned on, USB-B port to connect a PC or a laptop for wired music streaming, and an RS-232 port for home automation. And lastly, we have all these unbalanced RCA outputs to connect your external amps, since this is a preamp after all. For this review, I set up a 7.2.6 immersive audio configuration, and while I reviewed the MC1, I wanted to keep it as Emotiva-centric as possible. A while back, Emotiva sent me the Basics A7 and A6 external amps in anticipation of someday reviewing the MC1, so I was happy to finally use them together. I've used the A7 for various purposes over time, but not the A6. After all, 6 plus 7 equals 13, and the MC1 supports 13 main channels. But also, just in time for this review, I have two SW12 subwoofers from Stark Sound that I will be reviewing very soon. But one very cool feature of the SW12 subs is that, despite its budget price, they have XLR inputs and outputs on the back. And oh yeah, despite lacking XLR outputs for the main channels, the MC1 just so happens to have XLR outputs for the subs at least. So of course, I hooked up the subs via XLR cables, because if I'm ever given an option between RCA and XLR, I always go with XLR with my audio engineering background, recording and mixing music, etc. Does XLR make it sound 10 times better? No. But I personally prefer using balanced XLR inputs and outputs when I can, since you do get slightly higher voltage across your XLR cable versus RCA, and the peace of mind knowing it's a balanced and grounded audio signal free of electronic interference. Is it absolutely necessary? No. But again, that's just how I roll. You can do as you please. I calibrated the system using the EmoQ Auto Room Correction software. Although during the first couple of attempts when going through the option of doing it all at once, it kept having an error when it got to the subwoofers, failing the test altogether. Not sure why, but luckily there's a failsafe in that you can rerun the auto correction in two stages instead of all at once. The first stage being levels and distances, and the second being EQ. And when I did that, it had no trouble with the subs. Huh. I've heard some complaints online about Emotiva's processors being a bit buggy when it comes to the software side of things, so I guess I ran into one of those issues. But also having just a quick power cycle and running through the Emoq auto room correction again, it worked just fine, subs and all. 
but I was glad that there was a workaround besides just power cycling to make things work in the end. Although after I ran the auto EQ test, where it plays various test tones through each speaker and subwoofer one by one to determine which frequencies to boost or cut, the end result was just too much. Dialogue sounded nasally and a bit like it was being played through a tin can when demoing some of my go-to test scenes from movies, and it just sounded off, lacking a lot of oomph and overall fidelity that I was used to. But you can easily go into the menu system and turn off the EQ, which I did, and it sounded way better. My demo scenes came back to life with precision, oomph, excellent channel separation, and a tremendous sense of immersion. I do hopefully plan on doing a series of videos soon with a buddy of mine on manually correcting your room using REW, because the MC1 in particular has an extremely powerful parametric EQ that you can utilize without the need of getting something from Mini DSP, for example. The manual EQ isn't 100% the greatest, allowing you to EQ every single channel separately, but still loads better than most AVRs from the likes of Denon, Marantz, Sony, Onkyo, etc. Why is this true? Because a lot of times when dealing with manual EQ adjustments on an AVR, you might only be able to adjust the treble on the bass, like with the new Sony ES line. Or you can only adjust fixed frequencies, like with the Onkyo. Like for example, 62 hertz, 250 hertz, 500 hertz, but not being able to deviate from those fixed frequencies. But despite the MC1 having a menu system that looks like it's from the 1990s, do not let that fool you. Inside the EQ page, you can adjust the frequency a bit higher or lower, boost or cut the gain of that frequency, and also adjust the Q factor, which, as you can see, controls the bandwidth, or number of frequencies that will be affected. The lower the Q factor, the wider the bandwidth affecting more frequencies. The higher the Q factor, the narrower the bandwidth affecting less frequencies. Just a quick lesson in audio engineering, so you're welcome. But that alone is very powerful, allowing you to dial in your room correction much more precisely than your average AVR. Although as I alluded to earlier, there are some limitations though, since you can only EQ the front left and right speakers together and not independently. But having 11 bands of EQ to adjust is very cool. The center channel also has 11 bands of EQ, but beyond that you can only EQ the surrounds as a whole and not individually with only 7 bands of EQ, and the height channels as a whole and not individually also with 7 bands of EQ, and EQ the subs as a whole and not individually with only 5 bands of EQ. But that's not bad at all really, since with subs you're usually dealing with frequencies from 15 to 20 hertz, maybe up to 250 hertz, so 5 bands is usually plenty. And speaking of that outdated looking menu system, the other incredible thing about it that I can sum up in one word is overlay. Yes, my friends, this menu seamlessly overlays onto anything you're watching. Yeah, Denon and Marantz have a quick menu you can pull up while you're watching something, but it's not the full menu. The MC1, on the other hand, allows you to make adjustments to levels, EQ, inputs, audio preferences, etc., without having the menu completely take over the screen. So this is so handy when making A-B comparisons or dialing in adjustments in real time while you're watching something. You see, this is the basis for the MC1 and frankly, most Emotiva products, saving you the consumer money by stripping away a lot of the common features you'll find in other AVRs these days, like Apple AirPlay 2, IMAX Enhanced, RO3D, Rune, 8K support with HDMI 2.1, etc., and just giving you a solid audiophile focused product without all the fluff. And it shows. It sounds spectacular. One quick note about the remote. Among all the remotes out there, I gotta say Emotiva's looks really cool. The fact that the buttons are backlit and the buttons are zero profile, which looks really slick, as opposed to raised buttons like you'll see on most remotes. Although practically speaking, button presses sometimes didn't respond on the first push and the feel of those buttons wasn't on my list of favorite things about this processor. I still prefer a raised button personally, but that's just me being nitpicky. Along with Emotiva's focus on audio file quality on a budget, I listened to some music on this system as well. I popped in a few CDs into my 4K Blu-ray player and marveled at the sonic qualities of the songs I was listening to. What's great about the MC1 is that you do have the option of playing music through a pure 2.0 configuration, or 2.1 to activate your subs as well, or even play music through your entire system, which actually sounded great. I usually don't like all channel stereo as it's sometimes called, but I enjoyed that as well with the MC1. Hmm, 
I still prefer music coming out of just two channels, though, since that's how it's meant to be reproduced. But Emotiva doesn't focus solely on surround sound with their audiophile claims, since music sounds just as good. Now, those who have been following my channel for some time know that I've primarily had the IOTA AVX-17 as the brains of my theater for a year now. And there are rumors that the AVX-17, Tonewinner AT300, and MC1 are very similar products. Well, I can't say much about the AT300 since I have yet to get my hands on one, but between the MC1 and the AVX-17, yes, they are most definitely built from the same baseline of parts. Obviously, the internal topography will differ slightly between the three models, each manufacturer having their own proprietary capacitors, resistors, power supplies, and electrical engineering specifics. Sure. But as we can see here, the menu systems between the MC1 and AVX-17 are basically identical. The AVX-17 is obviously taller than the MC1 since it has a full set of XLR outputs as well as RCA. Although if you prefer connecting everything to your TV and using eARC for audio with streamers, gaming consoles, or Blu-ray players, the MC1 would be a better choice since the AVX-17 only supports ARC and not eARC. But I always connect everything straight to the preamp, so that doesn't really apply to me. IOTA's auto room correction is called EQ Flex, but we can see that it's based on the same exact software. But the result was the same. When I ran the auto EQ with the AVX-17, for whatever reason, the result wasn't as tinny and constrained as with the MC1, even though it's based on the exact same software. But being able to quickly AB the EQ on or off, I still preferred auto EQ off, even with the AVX-17 as well. Like I said earlier, I hope to utilize REW and make some manual EQ adjustments to my system soon, which will definitely have better results than the auto EQ. But yes, there are some software bugs at times, like when I kept getting an error with the subwoofers during the initial setup of the EmoQ auto room correction, but I was able to make it work in the end. After reviewing the MC1, reconnecting the AVX-17 and running EQ Flex, even it had a software glitch, not recognizing the rear height speakers, even though I knew for a fact they were there and they were connected. After a quick power cycle, oh, what do you know? I magically have rear heights now. Meh. I can live with those kind of bugs and glitches because once it's all set up, then it just works. Sure, the auto EQ on the MC1 created a sonic quality that I didn't like, sounding a little too processed and thin, but I can't stress enough how important it is to know that you can manually adjust the EQ so accurately with its parametric EQ page. One other tiny thing I didn't like though was that it seemed like every time I changed HDMI inputs or switched out a 4K disc, I would experience these very subtle pops coming from the speakers. Well, no, I wouldn't call them pops, maybe like little blips. You know, something like that. Nothing too alarming, nothing that would damage my speakers at all, just a little unsettling to an audio engineer like myself when I hear audio anomalies like that. Although I know we've all experienced the occasional blip or pop through a speaker with plenty of AVRs, but it just seemed like it happened a little more often with the MC1. But again, that's just me being nitpicky. So what's my personal winner here? I would still go with the AVX-17. Like I said, I prefer XLR outputs when given the option. And even though both processors can support either seven ear level and six height speakers or nine ear level and four height speakers, I do appreciate the fact that you can have up to four independent subwoofers with the AVX-17 for some well-balanced bass response in your room if you decide to expand to that point during your home theater journey. But obviously you pay more for such luxuries. At the time of this recording, the AVX-17 is $1699, whereas the MC1 is $1099, $600 less. Although the AT300 has XLR outputs and supports up to three subwoofers and is currently $1395. So you could technically do no wrong with either depending on your budget, number of subwoofers you have, and cable connection preferences. But pound for pound, the MC1 is still the best bargain by far if you're wanting to get into separates for the first time, and your primary focus is just good audio with out all the other bells and whistles. For example, the setup I had while testing, which was an MC1 powered by Basics A7 and A6 amps, you're looking at a grand total of $2,447. Remember, this is a 13.2 channel system we're dealing with. The Denon X6700H is normally $3299 and can process a total of 13 channels, but only with the help of an additional external amp, which obviously costs you more money. Although the Sony AZ-7000ES is 
also normally $32.99 and processes up to 13 channels. The Marantz SR8015 is normally $39.99 and can also process a total of 13 channels, but again, only with the help of an external amp. So to be able to support 13 channels with external amplification for less than $2,500 in 2023 after everything jumped up in price due to inflation, come on now. That's an incredible bargain. But on top of that, Emotiva is literally a one-stop shop since they also sell budget-friendly bookshelf, tower, and height speakers, subwoofers, CD players, headphones and DACs, high-performance speaker cables, 8K certified HDMI cables, XLR, optical, and RCA cables, etc. Leave a comment below if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure no other company out there can set you up with a completely immersive home theater system from top to bottom. Well, I guess they don't sell TVs or projectors, so there's that. But as far as audio is concerned, Emotiva has you covered. So am I happy with the results finally getting to review the MC1? Absolutely. Having used its close cousin for a year now, I had my expectations and Emotiva delivered. Sure, it doesn't have HDMI 2.1 or support 8K or 4K 120Hz with next-gen gaming, but if your goal is just to have some kick-ass audio for both movies and music, you can't go wrong with the MC1 and a couple of basic amps. And your wallet will thank you as well. Thank you for joining me on this review of the MC1 Cinema Processor from Emotiva. Now it's your turn. Are you thinking of entering the world of separates? Honestly, I'm such a huge fan of such a system ever since getting the AVX-17, and I guess until something better comes along that I can keep, it will remain a part of my baseline system when I'm not reviewing another AVR. I really believe it makes a difference with channel separation, dynamics, and fidelity. It really makes it seem like a theater or cinema at home rather than just being surrounded by sounds. So let me know about your home theater goals for the rest of 2023 in the comments below. With that being said, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them with the MC1 Cinema Processor. And of course, always be listening.